years, I get asked, why don't I use the vignette filter when I'm creating vignettes? Today, I'm going to go ahead and explain that. Now, before I dive too deep into today's tutorial, let me know in the comment section below, do you use the vignette tool or do you use local adjustments? So with this image, I already have the vignette filter applied. And if I turn this off, you can see what it's doing for the image. Now, the big softy, that seems to be the most popular preset that you can use with a vignette filter. And if you select more, there's obviously more options available. And then if you want to change the feather of your mask or whatever, then you can do that. But you also have the option of how you want this to blend. So you can go normal and that's going to be a little bit more intense. You can go subtle, you can go soft, or you can go priority. And then the last thing that you can do is change where the vignette happens. So if I pull this feather all the way down and I click on this little square, I can drag the vignette around. And now that's where I want it to be. I can drag the feather up. But unfortunately, that's kind of where your controls stop. Now, the way that I prefer to make my vignettes is over in the local adjustments tab. If I hit the letter M on my keyboard, I get the masking bug. And if I go with strong vignette and I click one time, I've created a vignette that I now have the ability to reshape in a few different ways. However, I would prefer my vignette to be shaped. And now what I can do is pull down on the exposure and that's going to really crank up on that. Uh, vignette capability, but I also have a few more options where I can select the contrast. So if I want more contrast in the vignette area, I can pull up on that and you can see that gives me a different look. This is something I don't have with the vignette filter. I can also control my highlights. So if I want more highlights uh, popping through on that particular vignette than I can, or if I want to pull down on highlights, then I can. I have mid-tone adjustments, shadows, so many different things. But what I also have the ability to do is to color my vignette. Now, I don't do this as often, but if I click the paint with color, and then I hit this drop down and I go to classic, you can see now I have the ability to do like this artsy type of vignette. And I still have all of the control of reshaping this however I want. And right now it's going with like a pink tone, but if I wanted to change it to something that's a little bit more red that matches with the image, I now have this stylistic look and you know, that's just something I can do really, really quickly. One of my favorite reasons why I enjoy this so much is because I can come up here to this gear icon and I can choose a different blend mode. Now this is capable in the vignette filter. However, with all of the other things that I'm adding onto it, uh, this really does pick up where the vignette filter leaves off. So that's why I personally like to come into the local adjustments and create my vignette there. And screen gives like this really ethereal look to the overall image, which is what I was going for. And I have this capability to modify this now uh, even more with these filters. Now, the other reason why I really, really enjoy using the local adjustments tab. I'm going to create a new adjustment here and I'm just going to pull down on this. If I wanted to create a vignette that is custom based off of the brush. Now I'm using the round brush, but let's say that you had a different brush that you wanted to use. Maybe you want to use a cloud brush to create your vignette or a light brush. I don't have any light brushes uh, loaded after I did my reset. I got to get to that. But let's pretend that I did have a light brush. I would be able to stamp that light onto the image uh, and create that vignette. But all I have to do is click here 
and I can click there. And now I'm creating a custom look for what would be a vignette. If I hit the letter O, you can see I just created uh, five big circles and they're all around on the image. But as I manipulate other areas, so maybe I don't want any structure in that area, which this photo didn't have much structure going on in the background. But there's just so many different things that I can do with the local adjustment to create my own special vignette that I don't get if I use just the vignette tool. So let me know in the comment section below, do you prefer using the vignette filter with its limited capability or do you like the idea of having more control over your vignette in the local adjustments tab? And also let me know how you use vignettes in your image and some creative ways that you may want to use them. I hope you found value in today's content. If you did hit that like button. And if you're new, consider subscribing for more tutorials centered around Almond Photo Raw and other photo editing applications. If you want to pick up a copy of Almond Photo Raw, check the link in the description box below. If you use Freewell Photos 20 at checkout, you'll save 20% picking up any standalone version of Almond Photo Raw and you even save some money on subscription models. Until next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.